Hello, this is Dallin Christensen, the founder and creative director of Whiteboard Business Partners. This is another edition of How I Make Business Happen. These are the video tutorials that I'd like to share with you to show you how I run my business and to give you some tips and tools on how you can be more productive in your own business. One of the most time consuming, tedious, and let's just face it, not so fun things to do when running a business is organizing your expense, expense receipts. We all know we need to do it. It's important for tax reporting purposes, but it's something that nobody really wants to do. In some cases, you may just have a shoebox full of receipts. You give them to your tax accountant at the end of the year. The tax accountant has to spend a significant amount of time sorting them, entering items. It's not a whole lot of fun. Fortunately, Evernote has some tips and tools that you can use to help organize your expense receipts over the course of the year, making things easier for you and for your tax accountant at year end. I'm going to open up the Evernote application that I have on my Mac right now. And what you are seeing right now is a picture of a receipt that I actually took when I was on a recent business trip in February. This was a Quiznos receipt from O'Hare Airport in Chicago when I was flying to South Carolina for a conference. All I did was go into my Evernote application on my iPhone and choose a new note and I just took a picture. I strictly took a picture of the note and then I was able to file it and you can see over here on the far left hand side of the application, you can see that I have titled this particular notebook within Evernote 2012-02 February underneath the WBP business expenses notebook stack. One of the great features of Evernote is that you can actually create notebook stacks which collect related notebooks. So in this case, what I want to do is collect all of my receipts by month. You may have a different method of collecting your expense receipts. You can use categories. You could use, for example, photos versus forwarded emails, which we'll get into in a moment. But the key thing here is to just have an organizational method and stick with it. So for me, I want to record all of my expense reports by, by month. The reason for this is I can go back and look at particular expenses by month and I like to keep track of my monthly profit and loss. So it's an easy way for me to organize all of my receipts. You can see that I have the total amount of 1077. Yes, this was O'Hare Airport. Everything is significantly more expensive there than outside of the airport security terminal. But this works as a receipt for my expense report purposes and at the end of the year I can either print this photo or I can export the photo into a file that I can give to my tax account at the end of the year. I don't need to keep the receipt in a shoebox anymore. I can if I want to but I try to run as paperless of an office as I possibly can so taking photos is a great way to immediately organize your expense receipts in a way that makes sense for you and for your tax account at the end of the year. Now, if you're like me, you have a number of receipts that come to you via email. For me, the most prevalent receipts I get from email are from 37 Signals. I'm a subscriber to Basecamp and to HiRise, and I get receipts for each one of those services every month. There are a couple of really cool tips and tools that you can use to actually directly forward your receipts, not only into Evernote, but into the correct folder or notebook as well as to have the correct tags on them as well. So for this example I'm going to open up my Apple Mail app and you'll see that I have a 37 signals high rise envelope or a 37 signals receipt that has come to me during the month of May. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to forward that note. I have just like everybody else does a dedicated Evernote email address. So whenever I have that email address, it gets forwarded to my Evernote directly. Now, the best thing about this feature in Evernote is when I forward something to Evernote, I can actually choose the notebook to which I want to forward as well as any tags that I would want to include on this particular note. So in this example, I'm forwarding my monthly subscription to HiRise and I'm going to forward it to my May 2012 notebook. The way that you go to a notebook, so you can see here that we have a 2012-05 May notebook and if we go back into mail and we find our particular email in question, all I do is 
list the notebook with an at sign in front of it. So as I highlight this, you can see that I'm going to forward this particular receipt directly to my May 2012 expense notebook. And since this is an expense, I want to also put a tag of expenses on this note. So I use the hash symbol, the pound sign, just like you would using Twitter. But in this case, I'm using pound sign expenses, and that will automatically assign the expenses tag within Evernote. The most important thing about this is you must have these the notebook and the tag already existing within Evernote. You cannot forward to a non-existent notebook and expect the notebook to be created by this method. The notebook and the tag must already be present in Evernote, and you can simply do that by right-clicking and then selecting new notebook, whether you're doing this within a notebook or within a notebook stack. If the notebook does not exist, it will simply go to your default folder, which for me is the inbox. And if the tag does not exist, then the tag, then the, the forwarded email note simply will not have a tag on it. So now I'm going to send this note using my Apple Mail application. It may take a little bit of time, but after syncing Evernote, what should happen, you can already see that I have the forwarded email from a, a prior submission, but what will ultimately happen is this email that I forwarded within a little bit of time after it goes through Evernote servers will ultimately appear within this notebook stack. I'll sync it one more time to see if it's going to show up and you can see here that for June 2012, I do have that receipt already forwarded. In this case, since I already have the monthly subscription here, I'm simply going to right click and I will delete the note. This is a terrific way for you to increase the efficiency of your workflow as well as to work on a paperless office. Instead of having to print notes, you can recycle your receipts, you can forward emails, really working on a paperless office and helping you become more productive and more efficient in your work. So that's how you can use Evernote to help store your expense receipts for tax reporting purposes. In a couple of weeks, I will come back with one more tip and tool on how you can use Evernote effectively.